Okay, this is part two of uh, lecture three. And here we're going to talk uh, shortly here just uh, uh, briefly about uh, the energy equation for pipes, which you should already be familiar with from fluid mechanics. Uh, in front of you here, we have the fluid, uh, the energy equation for pipes. And on the left side here, I have the total energy at section one, which is upstream of section two. And so I have the velocity head. And recall that the alpha one is basically a correction factor uh, because we're using the mean velocity at section one to represent the velocity head or the um, kinetic energy at that location. Uh, P1 over gamma is the pressure head and Z1 is the uh, potential energy head uh, due to its elevation. And then downstream we have the total energy at section two plus the head loss minus the energy added or subtracted from the flow per weight of fluid, uh, per unit weight of flowing fluid. And so the H sub L is basically a combination of the friction head loss and the minor losses, which you've already covered. And uh, you, the, the uh, friction losses I'll talk about here in some additional slides. But for minor losses, you're going to sum up the coefficients of for the minor losses for each type of loss. So if you've got a bend, that's going to have a K value. If you have a valve of a certain type, that's going to have a K value. And you would sum all those up through the reach and multiply by the velocity head to come up with the, head, the minor head loss. And then you would add that onto the friction head loss to come up with the total head loss. Now, the H sub S uh, is going to be positive HP if there's a pump involved. So you'd replace this with an HP uh, if it was a pump. And a lot of times, you'll have the HP as a plus HP on the left side of the equation. If it's a turbine, it's minus HT because it's extracting the energy for the for the tur for, uh, the turbine is extracting mechanical energy out, and so that is basically going to be plus HT on that left side on that right side. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of the friction losses, uh, I'm going to teach you two. Or we're going to talk about two here uh, that you already should be familiar with. The Darcy Weisbach, which is the preferred one uh, that I uh, is my preferred. Uh, equation because it's more physically based, and then the Hazen Williams. I feel an obligation to teach it to you uh, that is the Hazen Williams because it is used in a lot of design manuals, but it is empirical, and it the the friction coefficient there is purely based on the pipe uh, type uh, that's uh, in play, whereas the Darcy Weisbach is both based on both the type of pipe and the physics of the flow uh, through characterized through the Reynolds number. Okay, so the Darcy Weisbach, uh, just to remind you, is H sub L, which is the head loss due to friction, equals the F, which is the Darcy Weisbach friction factor. It's a function of both the Reynolds number and the relative roughness, uh, epsilon over D, times the length of the pipe between section one and section two, uh, the diameter of that pipe, and then the velocity head. The Hazen-Williams equation is written here in terms of the mean velocity, and you'll see that this uh, Hazen-Williams roughness coefficient C, you can pick that out of tables, the hydraulic radius, just to remind you, is basically uh, hydraulic radius is equal to the area, cross-section area of the pipe divided by wetted perimeter. The wetted perimeter is simply the circumference of the pipe, pi over d, uh, the area pi d squared over 4. Okay, And then the friction uh, slope, S sub f, is simply equal to the head loss due to friction uh, divided by the length L. All right. Now, as we go through, this is for uh, the types of pipe friction. Uh, the Hazen-Williams is in the first column here. That's the one I told you that you know, basically once you've got it, you've got it. If you've got a smooth glass or plastic pipe, you'd select the Hazen Williams of 150, and no matter what the flow is, it's going to be the same C, whether it's a, you know, 100 gallons per minute going through the pipe or 3,000 gallons per minute going through the pipe, which, you know, so it does not take into consideration any kind of flow dynamics. Whereas for the uh, Darcy Weisbach, I want you to disregard the Manning equation or the Mannings in here. We're only going to use that for uh, uniform flow, or I'm sorry, uh, open channel flow. But for the uh, Darcy Weisbach, you're going to pick off an equivalent roughness value. And in this case, if I had a smooth glass plastic, 0 0.00075 inches. And then I would use that with the diameter of the pipe to get an, a relative roughness. 
and then with the Reynolds number, I could pick off the value of F. Here's the Moody diagram. If you'll notice here in this part of the diagram through here, that's the wholly turbulent uh, flow section. And you'll note that basically the value of F over here on the left is only a function of the relative roughness because the lines here are horizontal through this section. In this section here, this is uh, where you have developing flow in, in the sense that um, it is built, the roughness of uh, the, the friction factor roughness is due to uh, is a factor of both the Reynolds number down here and the relative roughness. So you would pick a value of relative roughness uh, based on your pipe and you'd come along the, the line, the uh, curve here, and if you're in this section here where it's in the curvilinear part, you're going to also have to figure out what the Reynolds number is to be able to come in here and where they intersect would be the value of F. And so uh, one of the ways that we would solve pipe flow problems, if we don't know the flow rate, we can't calculate the Reynolds number because Reynolds number is, you know, basically RE down here, and that's equal to the rho, which is the uh, density of the fluid, times the mean velocity of the fluid, times the diameter of the pipe, divided by the, kin or the dynamic viscosity. So if we don't know the flow rate, we have no idea what the velocity is. And so we would have to, first of all, assume a value of F. And what I always do is I just assume once I've got my relative roughness that I'm in this wholly turbulent range of flow, and I would basically go across here horizontal, whatever my relative roughness is, I would go straight across horizontally to the uh, left side of the chart and pick off a value of F. Plug that into the equation, uh, F L over D times V squared over 2G, which is right here. And I would use that basically to calculate my, my head loss, and then I'd uh, plug that into the energy equation and I would solve for the flow rate, whatever I was being asked to do. Once I have a flow rate, I could go back in, calculate the Reynolds number and the relative roughness, and I would pick off a new value of F. And if that F that I picked off uh, matched my originally assumed value of F, then I'm done. If it's not, I use that new value that I've computed for F, recompute the value of the head loss, go through and get the flow, the flow rate, and then come back and do it again. Now, if you're like me and you don't like to use the Moody diagram because the lines seem to run together, you can use the Jane's equation, which is this formula right here. And so this is a representation of the Moody diagram. Now, if you're going to make your assumption that I had a wholly turbulent flow to make your first estimate of the value of F, I would assume that the Reynolds number here was very large. It's much, much greater than 1. And so in that particular case, when you can assume that, that makes this value here equal to zero. And so if you go in and do your uh, initial computation of F, you just uh, uh, calculate or you just plug in the value of the relative or the effective roughness divided by the diameter, take it times uh, the or take the log uh, base 10 of that value and square it, divide it into 0.25, and you get a value of F. Then you would go through and calculate your head loss and your new value of the, the velocity and then the subsequent value of the flow rate, and then you'd get back in here. Now you're ready to calculate the Reynolds number because, again, just repeating, that's uh, essentially the density of the fluid times the mean velocity uh, times the pipe diameter divided by the, kinematic, or the dynamic viscosity. These values are basically out of your uh, fluid mechanics tables, and they're in the textbook, I think, in Chapter 1 or 2. I can't recall, but... Uh, you would use those, plug in the value of V, get a Reynolds number, plug that in right here, and then recompute a value of F. Again, if it matches, you're done. If it doesn't, you have to go back and do it again. All right. Uh, going back to the Hayes and Williams equation, there's two forms of that equation that are referred to in terms of head loss. And this one should be noted that it is in the ter uh, of a not total head loss, but it's a head loss per thousand foot of pipe or head loss uh, in meters per thousand meters of pipe, if you're going to use this form. This is the form I recommend that you use down here, because that's going to give you the head loss in direct terms of feet or meters. And this is the value of K that you would use. Now, uh, if you want to put the Darcy Weisbach in the same kind of form that you've got the, the uh, Hayes and Williams, and this is very useful 
if you do chapter or lecture nine, which is a bonus lecture uh, solving, solving for the flow around a network of pipes using the Hardy Cross method, you're going to have to have that Darcy Weisbach in this kind of formulation. And so this makes it very uh, nice and neat here by putting it in terms of Q. And this is what it is right here, this value of K that plugs in right here. So it's the same equation. It's just basically instead of using velocity, you'll note that velocity is equal to Q over A. It's just plugging that in um, into the, the original equation. Remember, H sub L is equal to F. L over D, B squared over 2G. And essentially, this is just basically plugging this in for the velocity here and knowing that the area is equal to pi D squared over 4. You come up with this equation. All right. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Manning equation for pipe flow. You're not responsible for anything there. There are some problems. You're welcome to work those as you want, but I'm not going to give you a Manning equation problem for pipe flow. You're going to use the Manning equation uh, really heavily for open channel hydraulics. Okay, so this is the example problem and uh, that I'm giving you and, and trying to get you to tell me what the head loss is. You're going to use the, the Hazen-Williams formula. Uh, disregard. If you want to use the Manning's formula, you can. Uh, the Darcy Weisbach equation. This is a fairly easy problem. I'm giving you what the velocity is so you can calculate the Reynolds number for the Darcy Weisbach that you're given the type of uh, it's a new ductile iron pipe so you can calculate uh, you got the diameter here of 150 millimeters. You can calculate the, the Reynolds number. You can get a value of the uh, relative roughness. Uh, here I've even picked it out for you off of uh, the textbook and you can see that the effective roughness is 0.19 millimeters. So you plug that in for the uh, effective roughness 0.19 and then the diameter is 150 millimeters. So you would get whatever that is for the relative roughness. Go to your Moody diagram or your, uh, or your James equation to plug that in. The Reynolds number is already, you have everything you need. Uh, you'd calculate the density of the fluid. You could look that up in a table. You've got the mean velocities given to you right here. Okay, this is a relatively easy problem just to kind of get you going. Uh, and then I've got the uh, diameter of the pipe already given. Make sure you use the same units uh, of, you know, velocities meter per second. So you need to put the diameter in terms of meters. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you're using the SI version of the slugs. I mean, of the, uh, the density. You, you want to uh, use the proper uh, uh, density values there, kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, and then essentially uh, for the uh, kinematic viscosity, you can look that up, or dynamic viscosity, you can look that up in a table as well. Get into either Moody diagram or the Jane's equation, calculate a value for F, and then you can calculate the head loss uh, is equal to F L over D B squared over 2G. All right, that concludes uh, the second part of lecture three. And you should, uh, after viewing this lecture, listening to it in class, uh, you should then do the example, or not the example, but the uh, assigned lecture uh, problem uh, problems, and you have the solutions for those for lecture three.